In the early hours of January 22nd, last Friday, the Sheriff's Office and police in Amelia, Virginia, responded to a report of an active abduction and threats to kill at a local home. Inside the home, they found the body of Waddell E. Brooks, age 68. Mr. Brooks had been bound to a chair and had been strangled to death. His wife, Aline Brooks, also 68 years old, was missing and presumed to be kidnapped. The Brooks 2010 Silver Dodge Caravan was also missing. Investigators identified Dana Lee William, age 43, who grew up in the Fitchburg area as a suspect in the murder and abduction. William was the ex-son-in-law of the Brooks, and investigators believed he had targeted them. Investigators also had reason to believe William was headed back to Massachusetts in the stolen van. At 11.15 last evening, a Fitchburg police officer on patrol located the van in a parking lot at 245 River Street. Working with the State Police Violent Fusion Apprehension Section, Fitchburg police located William in an apartment at 19 Chester Street, about a half a mile from where the van had been found. It appeared that he knew someone at that location. At about 9 a.m. this morning, members of the State Police stop team surrounded and entered the apartment. As they did, William shot himself in the head. He was treated on scene and was taken to UMass Memorial Hospital in Worcester, where he currently is, and he's in critical condition. Oline Brooks has not been found. We are going to be releasing a picture of her after we finish up here. There's an active and ongoing search for her at this time. This investigation has been a cooperative effort, including several agencies, including the Fitchburg Police Department, the Amelia County Sheriff's Department, the Virginia State Police, the U.S. Marshals, the Massachusetts State Police, the Massachusetts State Police assigned to the Worcester District Attorney's Office, and VFAS. Are there any questions at this time? Is there any indication at this time, any reason to believe that uh, Ms. Brooks is, is A, alive, and B, might be in Massachusetts? It's all part of the investigation. We're in the early stages of the investigation with regards to that. I can't give you an answer on that at this time. Well, the Brooks are the ex-relatives. He is the ex-son-in-law. Dana Lee William is the ex-son-in-law of the Brooks. It appeared there was an assault that Mr. William went to prison for down in Virginia. We don't have all the details of that at this time. Had gone to jail, at some point was released from jail. And we believe that they may have been targeted as a result of that assault. You mean the crime was against them or someone in their family? Yes, I don't want to get into that at too much at this point. We need more information to verify that. But it, yes, we do believe that they were targeted. There was an abduction down there. Um, Mr. Brooks was killed, and Mrs. Brooks was taken. Did you steal anything from their house? Money, valuables, anything? Uh, uh, we don't have any indication of that at this time. What you, were you guys watching this area up there again, particularly because of the Fitchburg route and that information? Well, it was an alert Fitchburg police officer who was on. There was a bolo be on the lookout for that was put out last night. I can let the chief talk to that a little bit. Um, but it was a uh, Fitchburg police officer doing a job and observed this uh, um, 2010 Dodge Caravan. So how do you go about looking now for Oline Brooks? I mean, that's a pretty unanswered question. Like yes, it is. Well, you know, the investigation, the crime scene re really stems from Virginia to Massachusetts. There are different things that... Um, the police have been doing uh, along the route that we presume that it was taken. Um, and we've just got to continue to let them do their job and hope that we can find Ms. Brooks. Ms. Scott, I have a criminal on the record. This is Mr. Dana Williams. Well, I can let the chief talk to that as to his criminal involvement in Fitchburg. Sure, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming today. Um, first of all, I just I want to reiterate, this was truly an isolated event. Um, I stated this morning, um, the, the Caligon section of Fitchburg is a very densely populated area, and, and I want to assure people that the, the city is safe, um, that we treated this as an isolated incident, and uh, there is no reason to have any alarm in our Claygon section of the, uh, the city of Fitchburg. Um, going back to Mr. Williams, he is known to the Fitchburg Police Department. He grew up in the city of Fitchburg. Um, we've had involvement with him over the years, so he was well known to the Fitchburg Police Department. Going back a couple days, we became aware of the situation in Virginia, um, what was happening, and we were put on notice. Uh, because of the ties to Fitchburg. Um, notices came out through Bolos, as the DA said, and uh, we were notified through different fusion centers that possibly Mr. Williams could be heading back to his hometown of Fitchburg. 
Um, so there's been notice out to all our patrol officers, um, and as the DA said last night, one of our nighttime patrol officers located the vehicle, and that's what set everything in motion as of last night, as soon as we located the vehicle. That's when investigators took over. Um, through the investigation, it led us to the address on Chester Street, and I'd just like to say, um, you know, the combination of work between all agencies, the Pittsburgh Police Department, the Massachusetts State Police, the Marshals Unit, the Virginia authorities, um, it's second to none. Law enforcement was at its finest today, and um, we were able to locate someone that we had serious concerns that could bring harm to our community. So um, for that, I'm very thankful. Any questions, folks? When the uh, officers went into the residence on Chester Street, which floor do they occur? Which floor? Which it, floor? It's a, I believe it's a three-family. We, we were concentrating on the bottom floor. The bottom floor? Correct. Did uh, Mr. Willem have an opportunity to say anything to the officers prior to him apparently I don't have any knowledge of that. you know why he chose that place? Is that a family, friends? Uh, that's what our it? investigators are looking at right now as we speak. That That's one link that we're trying to put together. And I believe the mayor also wanted to ask. Any other questions for me? Uh, he, he does have a, a, a history with the police department um, without getting into his quarry information, obviously, uh, but, but he is known to the police department. I, I've been here for 30 years. I, I, I know him. I know the family. Um, we're not a very big community, but uh, he was known to us. Excuse me. I'd hate to make a classification at this point. I don't have an answer for you to that. Sorry. Any yeah. idea how long he was in Pittsburgh? Uh, no. Is it possible that he might be taking charge of this? Is that the government knowing? I mean, it's possible. Like, like I said, this is a very fluid investigation at this point. There's many entities involved in this, not just the Pitchburgh Police and the State Police, but the Marshal Service, the Virginia authorities. Um, we're, we're only at the beginning of this investigation. And, and our investigators still have quite a bit of work to do on it. There's, there's a lot of unanswered questions still to be done. Thank you, folks. Thank you, Mr. District Attorney. I just want to say thank you to, uh, uh, to the organizations. that. Uh, this is a real coordinated effort, uh, po real police, 21st century policing at its best. Uh, and as the chief has mentioned, I want to ensure people that people of Fitchburg are safe. And they should be very, very thankful for this coordinated effort. The district attorney's office, the state police, the U.S. Marshals, uh, great coordinated effort. And uh, uh, we're, we're pleased, certainly. I'm pleased at the, uh, at the outcome here. We hope that we can, that we'll find Mrs. Brooks and she'll be okay. But uh, again, I want to thank uh, all the agencies that were involved today. Uh, great piece of police work. Thank you. Questions for me, folks? Thank you. Okay. You know, that's not, I, I can't answer that right now. Uh, our investigation, basically, I don't have the facts of any convictions uh, down in the Virginia area. That's obviously something that's going to be looked at. I'm sure you're going to have more questions with regards to that. But the only information we have right now is that he was serving prison time, had been let out of jail. We don't have any facts with regards to that case. or We understand it, it, it may have been an assault, but I can't get into anything else at this point with regards to that. Thank you very much. This morning? It, it was the Pittsburgh Police Department and the Massachusetts State Police, and the Marshal Service was uh, involved as well. So three agencies. Pri primarily the Pittsburgh Police and the Massachusetts State Police. And the State Police stock team. The, yeah, with, yes. Uh, thank you.
It's all part of the investigation. Mr. Carr impounded, uh, would we be able to get access to the You're not going to get access to the No, okay. okay. okay.